right, so we're here in Harrington Harbor, Maryland, coming to see a friend of ours. He owns a Valiant 42 here in the harbor. The interior layout of his Valiant is the V-Birth style layout, whereas the one that we saw in Annapolis is the Pullman version. We wanted to come here and check out the interior of his boat to see if we prefer that interior layout because there is another Valiant 42 for sale in the United States and it's over in Seattle. And we are going to go on a sail today. Yeah, <laughs> this is going to be great. It's a cold day, but it's nice and sunny and there's some wind, so this should be awesome. Wow, it looks a lot bigger with this different configuration. Because there isn't a Pullman berth and then that sail locker forward, this bulkhead can move further forward and there's a lot more room here on the port settee and at the table. I'd say comparing it to the other Valiant 42, the settee probably ends about right here. So it's just this space. So you lose all this space here. I mean, look at that. Like we're sitting at the same table, Yeah. but you could even, yeah, you could put your feet out yeah. all the way and I could sit here. And the other thing with the other layout was the person on the inside was just stuck and so this one is cool because you could be sitting there and i could just sneak out right here yeah you know and yeah. on top of that it actually folds out to like here yeah so this is another perk of this configuration like this is a big bed you know if we had guests the thing i like about the pullman though is that because that is the problem with the V-Birth. It's like we have too much room up here. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just don't need that much room at our shoulders. But at the same time, like our feet don't have much room. I would prefer the, the birth of the Pullman birth. And then the Pullman birth had a lot more storage. Yeah. I mean, this has a lot of storage, but it's harder to get to. Yeah. Like you have to lift the mattress to get to it. Whereas the Pullman just had large drawers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and with the Pullman, all of that side of the boat was storage, which was yeah. pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I will say, I really like this, the, how this room feels. Like, I feel like the Pullman berth, it felt a little bit like a cell and then like a random assortment of storage areas. And then you've got that sail locker area. And that all feels so random for like a bedroom feel. Whereas this room, there's a lot more light and ventilation and it feels like a room. The other nice thing is there's two hatches up here. Yeah. So there's one up here that's on the foredeck and then there's one right here. I mean, this is the most ventilation I've ever seen in like a main berth. I kind of feel like we could go either way. Yeah. You know, I feel like there's pros and cons to yeah. both. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe what we should do is kind of put an offer in on the boat in Seattle, you know, and see if they're willing to come down on price. Mm -hmm. And if they are, then we could go see it. Mm -hmm. And if they're not, then we could negotiate with this boat, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Chad, how's it look out there? Cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This way, you want to keep an eye out for crab pots. Uh -huh. They're around, there's a couple of small buoys. How do you feel standing while sailing? There's so many things that are like totally different about this. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. I'm not in the sun and I can, like you say, stand and I'm not steering with my feet. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. All right, we're gonna go down below and see what the motion feels like down here. Definitely a lot more calm than we'd probably be on Atticus, I'd say, right? Yo, yeah. Coming down the companionway, you've got like body, yeah, like you can lean I, against I really stuff, like that. you know? Uh, it's not just hand hold, it's like body holds, yeah. you know? On Atticus, when the boat was moving, you just didn't want to be down below because it wasn't 
nice and there was no space, you know? Uh -huh. And the boat would heel so much and the yeah. motion was typically so extreme. It's actually nice and relaxing to be down here. The whole boat takes a lot longer mm -hmm. to actually roll, whereas mm -hmm. Atticus, it's like, wow, 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 Yeah, yeah, totally. Like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, so we're super hard on the wind right now. This is so cool mm -hmm. to be just sailing right into 20 knots, <laughs> you know? All right, so we're getting ready to meet our broker Bernie Jackets from David Walter Yachts for the first time in person. And uh, we're here at his office, so let's go say hi. Hi, Bernie. Hey, hi. hi. It's a world famous Dan yeah. and John, Bud and Buddy. Hi. Hey. Good to see you guys. <laughs> uh, today's project is going to be interesting. We have a nice, cool winter day, but we're going to go look at underbodies and different designs. Boat designs is as unique as people that buy them, okay? Every, every boat is there for a purpose to make somebody happy, to fulfill their needs. And it doesn't matter if you cross a bay or just a sound or an ocean. Everybody's looking for the same exact thing, a little bit of adventure. Uh, yeah, in life. But the idea is to find a design that fits your specific need. There's a boat for, like a tool for every job. Yeah. And so, you know, let's say we look at this Island Packet here. 1999 Island Packet 380. This is a classic example of a full keel boat. People love them because of the stability, the space they give you. But as you see at the underbody, it's not a super refined underbody. This is not a fine entry in what, what, what whatsoever. Gotcha. Because you got a lot of mass all the way through. The reason why these boats are so stable is because they're so, it's like having a big fat ass. Yeah. A big fat ass is gonna be comfortable sitting on a couch. Okay, yeah. Okay, that's basically what it is. It's gonna be comfortable. And so you can see that right here. Right, okay, right. Yeah. Okay, we can, you can see how, it's very wide already. Yeah. So yeah. that means when water hits it, it's gonna push already a lot. This boat is gonna basically, basically go 55 degrees into the wind. Uh-huh. Where let's say you look at a J is gonna go 37 degrees into the wind. Right. Okay, a Valiant is gonna be 45. Yeah. The reason why people love these boats is because they're extremely comfortable, and I think it's one of the most perfect boats to take to the Bahamas, cruise the sound, and stuff like that, because you know, there's enough wind, shoal draft, robust construction, and a commodious interior. So from what Bernie told us about the Island Packet, it sounded like it would make a good cruising boat for some people, but it would be less ideal for us for a couple reasons. First of all, because it's a full keel, there's a lot of wetted surface area below the waterline. Basically, there's just a lot of surface area that's touching water, and that creates more drag, it means that the boat wouldn't sail as well in light winds. Also, Bernie was saying that it doesn't really have a sharp entry, and that just means that the bow, where it touches the water, a sharp entry would be really acute, and then an entry that isn't sharp is gonna be more broad like this. And so the Island Packet has kind of an obtuse bow section. And that just means it's not gonna sail as well to windward, which is something that's pretty important for us. Now Bernie was saying that the boat would be really comfortable in relatively protected waters. And the reason is because it carries its beam further forward. And that's why it doesn't have a very sharp entry. And what that's gonna do is that beaminess when you're in protected water and the wind gets to it, it's not gonna heal as much because it's got a lot of like width there that'll keep it from healing over. But that same beam would represent kind of a problem when sailing offshore because the waves would affect it and kind of push the boat from side to side, giving it a little bit of a worse motion than if it were narrower and the waves just wouldn't be able to affect the motion as much. But Bernie was saying that the island packets are built really strong and because of that full strong keel, the boat would do really well if it ran aground, it wouldn't suffer much damage. So the boat, I think, would make a good cruising boat, but it does sacrifice a good amount of sailing performance to allow for a large interior and a relatively shallow draft. So next, Bernie wanted to show us a boat that really optimized for sailing performance. We have basically a classic modern design. It's an Odyssey, which is very similar to, as you know, to a Hanze. It is basically a very comfortable boat to sail the bay on for somebody who wants a little bit of spice in their life after a hard day's work. Uh, it's very commodious. You can see it's a plumb bow, all waterline. 
all water line, meaning that basically it's a fast boat, it's a lively boat, it's a fun boat definitely to sail. You have no, no, no question about it. This boat is definitely going to be fast. It's a light air performer. When the wind picks up to 20 knots, you're going to be hanging on for your dear life. Yeah. Because the boat's going to go all over the place. You're going to be on your toes constantly keeping this boat under control. The flat sections here. This translates to pounding. All this translates to pounding because it's not, not just cutting through the water here. Yeah. You're just going boom, 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 boom. You can see how the joint, heel joint here, they just bonded here. You got definitely some, you know, like lag bolts that go in here. A grounding like this on a boat like this, you're going to lose that. That's yeah. the reality of it. Also, what the problem with these type of boats is a flat bottom boat means it's shallow bilges. That means that the tanks are going to be very small if they even have tanks over there, okay? Oh, but also when you're healing, you'll always have water in these bilges. The boat heals and then the water in the bilges gets soaked up into the woodwork down below oh, because it has no place to go. And plus they have to have such a grid system that there's no lumber holes that go through there. So water lives in a cavity and you can't get it out from one to the other to the other to the other. Huh. A lot of exposed underbody. In heavy air, this boat's gonna, the autopilot's constantly gonna turn and work itself. If you look at all the stuff that hangs here on the side, a boat like this, if you hit a log, this thing's gonna come through, you're gonna have a three inch hole in the boat. Everything's exposed, okay? Small little strut, not a, it's not a robust build, okay? Yeah. It's basically, the, the hull thickness on this boat is basically a tenth of what a Valiant would be. Hanses, Genos, Dufours, Benetors, you know, Pervarius, it's the same exact principle on every one of those boats. In my opinion, this is only my opinion as a professional, okay? This is not a world voyaging boat. Can you sail around the world on this boat? Yes, you could sail around the world on a Catalina 27 if you wanted to, if you're good enough, or even like an Allied Sea Wind that's 80 years old, okay? <laughs> okay? So even though this boat was built to sail exceptionally well, it just wasn't designed to be strong and robust enough to handle the really extreme conditions that we would regularly put it through. So now, whereas the first boat that we saw, the Island Packet, is built really strong and would make for a pretty good cruising boat, although it does sacrifice a lot of sailing performance, and whereas the Sun Odyssey is an exceptional sailing boat, but not built all that strong, Next, we wanted to see something more along the lines of what we're looking for in Atticus 2, which would be a balance between those two design concepts. So we have a Pacific Seacraft, Crelock 40 right here. You're looking at one of the finest built boats. It is really a classic of all times. Built extremely well. Absolutely drop dead beautiful looking. This boat has the Henry Shield underbody. I mean, that basically it's, it's a slightly bold keel that's extremely refined. This keel makes the boat think it's a six and a half foot draft, where it's actually really a five and a half foot draft. This boat has a nice full underbody, no flat sections, a beautiful entry. Right now the wind's blowing at 25 knots, okay? And this boat, look, you can see the entry. This boat you could take right now and head to the islands without missing a beat and not having any fear whatsoever. The prop is totally protected, the rudder is protected, and supported from the bottom and the top. You can see that the rudder and the skeg is almost as deep as the keel itself. This boat is gonna be effortlessly driven. Uh, you're never gonna have a death grip on the wheel. Even under a lot of wind and the staysail double reef main, you'll still be able to hold onto the wheel with one hand. You got the section between the rudder and the keel configuration. Still, that gives you a lot more lateral stability. Overall, I mean, I actually give this boat like a nine and a half or 10 in design and construction. Now, as Bernie mentioned, this Pacific Seacraft has a shield keel, which is a shorter keel that allows the boat to get into shallower water. Now, it does sacrifice a little bit of windward performance by doing so. We would be looking for boats with the deeper draft version of that fin keel, which a lot of Pacific Sea Crafts do come with that deeper keel. Bernie showed us a Valiant 42 a little later on that has that deeper keel, and you can see that the foil shape actually looks like the wing of an airplane. And that's what's gonna allow this boat to sail really well to windward. But unlike the Sun Odyssey, the keel on this boat is really really substantially connected to the hull. And these hulls and keels have really proven their ability to be able to survive hard groundings over the years. So it was so great having Bernie show us around so that we could see firsthand how what we're looking for in Atticus 2 is gonna be a balance between safety, strength, and sailing performance. I think the other thing we learned today was that both the Valiant 42 
and the Pacific Seacraft 40 would accomplish that balance really well. And today was a really great lesson for me because um, as we've been looking at so many boats over the last couple of months, it's so easy to get tempted by boats that have huge, spacious, luxurious interiors. But walking around the yard today really made me realize that we can't just get distracted by the biggest, prettiest interior, but instead that the underbody of the boat is really, really important. So after he showed us around the yard, we had a meeting with Bernie to discuss how much we liked the V-Birth version of the Valiant 42 that we saw. And after a long discussion with him, we decided to make an offer on a Valiant 42 that was in Seattle. It was asking 215 and had the V-Birth arrangement. We were super stoked about it, put the paperwork together, sent it off. And then the next day we heard back from Bernie and he told us that that boat was already under contract and that most likely it was off the market. No! But we figured we still had a chance with the Valiant 42 that we looked at last week, uh, which was the Pullman layout. So we contacted the broker and it had only been like four days, um, but it turned out there was also an offer uh, underway on that boat. So that leaves one more Valiant 42 on the market and it's over in Seattle. It's also a V-Birth layout, but they're asking 259, which is definitely way over our budget. But we decided that we should put in a low ball offer and see what happens. So we're crossing our fingers, but it's definitely not something that we should count on. So this next week, we do have one more boat on our list, and it is the Pacific Seacraft 40, which from the very beginning of this boat search, we've been really excited about. And after today with the glowing review that Bernie gave it, we're even more excited to take a look at it. So we're gonna check it out next week. Hope to see you then. to take a couple minutes to thank some of our newest patrons. So to our first mate level patrons, thank you so much, Ehud Abramson. And to our newest bosun level patrons, thank you so much, Stephen Graham and Brian Wilson. And to our newest yacht master level patrons, thank you, Bill and Melissa Hines, Carmen Ndiaye, Derek and Leanna Hale, Paul Newton, Gerald Bricky, Robert Waller, and Angel and Mary Matos. And finally, thank you to our newest deckhand level patrons, Caroline Jetter, Christine Roscoe, Alan Jacobson, Mark Verhoeven, Marshall Orr, Philip Shannon, Craig Longor, and Jim Worthy. Thank you guys so much for all of your love, support, and encouragement. It means the world to us, and without your help, we wouldn't be able to put nearly as much time, love, and energy into each and every one of our episodes. So thanks guys, and we'll see you next week.